Welcome to our Bible study today, and uh, today we want to speak about uh, our righteous. We always wonder why, why, why does the Bible say that all our righteousness uh, is basically just considered as uh, as a filthy rags? Why does the Bible uh, make us feel as if um, <laughs> we are not supposed to do anything? You see, there are people who say, I want to be this, I want to be that. I want to try and be as good as possible. I want to stop doing this, stop doing this. But the Bible considered all, considers all that as uh, filthy rags. And then you get confused and you ask yourself, why? You see, all of us have become like one who is unclean and all our righteousness acts are as filthy rags. We all shivel up like a, th- uh, like a leaf. And uh, the wind, and like the wind, our sins sweep us away. That is what the Bible says in the book of Isaiah 64, verse 6. Now, this passage is often used as a proof text to condemn all our acts of goodness as nothing more than just filthy rags in the eyes of God. But uh, the context of this passage is referring specifically to the Israelites in the, the time of Isaiah, that is around 1760 to uh, 670 BC. And uh, at this time, the Israelites had s- s- uh, strayed away from God. And Isaiah was writing concerning uh, his nation and their hypocrisy. Yet, he includes himself in the description saying, We and our. Do you see that point? So Isaiah was redeemed. And set apart as a prophet of God, yet he saw himself as part of a group that was utterly sinful. And the doctrine of total, uh, of, of total depravity is taught clearly elsewhere in scripture. Like for example, if you check uh, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1, uh, it says, And you has he quickened who are dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past you walk according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, and so forth. And of course, the illustration of Isaiah 64 verse 6, which uh, uh, I've just read for you, could, could rightly be applied to the whole world, especially given Isaiah's inclusion of himself in the description. And also, when you look at the term filthy rags, we understand this one is quite strong, a very strong word to say, because filthy is a translation of the Hebrew word ida, which literally means the bodily fluids from a woman's menstrual cycle. And the word the, the, the word rags is a translation of begged, meaning a rag or a, a garment. Therefore, these righteous acts are considered by God as repugnant as a soiled feminine hygiene product. Just imagine how filthy is that. As Isaiah wrote this, the Israelites had begun, uh, had been the recipients of numerous miracles, uh, miraculous blessings from God, yet they had turned their backs on him by worshipping false gods. This one is well documented in the book of Isaiah 42 verse 17, which says, They shall be turned back. They shall be greatly ashamed that trust in graven images, that say to the molten images, You are our gods. They also made sacrifices and and burnt incense on, on strange altars. Like the Bible says in the book of Isaiah 65 from verse 3 to 5, a people that provoketh me to anger continually to my face, that sacrifices in gardens and burnt uh, incense upon altars of brick, which remain among the graves and lodge in the monuments which eat swine flesh and broth of abominable things in their vessels and, and so forth. Isaiah had even called Jerusalem a harlot and compared it to Sodom, Isaiah 3 9, the shoe of their countenance does witness against them, and they declare their sin as Sodom. They had it not, woe unto their soul, for they have rewarded evil unto themselves. So now, these people had an illusion of their own self righteousness, yet God did not seem esteem their acts of righteousness as anything but polluted garments 
or just filthy rags. And their apostasy or falling away from the law of God had rendered their righteous works total or totally unclean. Just like the wind, their sins were sweeping them away. And you see, when you check some guy like, for example, Martin Luther, he once said that the most damnable and pernicious heresy that has ever plagued the mind of man is that somehow he can make himself good enough to deserve to live forever with an all holy God through self-righteousness mm, through your own self-righteousness or I can say although self-righteousness is con- condemned through the Bible because this one has been spoken of in um, the book of Ezekiel chapter 33 verse 13 which says when I shall say to the righteous that he shall surely live if he trusts to his own righteousness and commit iniquity all his righteousness shall not be remembered but for his iniquity that he has committed he shall die for it and also Romans 3:27 where he's boasting then it is excluded by what law of works nay by the law of faith Titus 3 5 not by works of righteousness which you have done but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost so we are in fact commanded to do good works and Paul explained that we cannot do anything to save ourselves but our salvation comes only as a result of God's grace Ephesians 2 8 9 he tells about this, for by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves the gift of God not of works lest anyone should boast right so now we understand that he proclaimed very well the apostle paul in ephesians 2 10 that we are his workmanship created in christ jesus for good works okay which god prepared beforehand that we should walk in them that that's something that we understand that we are created for a purpose we are not just created and then immediately you're saved, you go to heaven. No, we are supposed to go to, uh, to do good works. And also, Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 5 tells us, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. So now, our salvation is not the result of any of our efforts or abilities or intelligent choices, personal characteristics or acts of service that we may perform however as believers we are created in christ jesus for good works so that we can help and serve others while there is nothing we can do to earn our salvation god's intention is that our salvation will result in acts of service and we are saved not merely for our own benefit but to serve christ and build up the church ephesians 4 12 the Bible says, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. That's our duty. And this one reconciles the this, this seeming conflict between faith and works. Our righteous acts do not produce salvation, but are in fact evidence of our salvation. How can you show that you have salvation and, and there are no fruits? Think about James 1.22. It tells us, be uh, be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. And also James 2.14-26 to 26 says, What does it profit, my brethren, though a man say he has faith and have not works? Can faith save him? If, he's, if, if a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say to them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding ye, and so forth. Basically, when you look at James, James is he just tells us we have to show our faith through our good works. You cannot say that the wind is going to the east and we cannot see peppers and trees bending to the to the to the east side. Are you getting the point? So in the end, we have to recognize that even our righteous acts come as a result of God within us, not ourselves. On our own righteousness, it is simply self-righteousness. And vain, hypocritical religion produces nothing more than just filthy rags. Are you getting the point here? So, we have to be very conscious about that. And we have to understand that anything we do to gain salvation 
is filthy rags. But if we are already saved and we are doing good things, then those are rewards in heaven. God bless you. I hope this has been a blessing to you.